Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1536. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. I'm very revved up and very excited to share with you today a guest calling in from beautiful Sturgeon Lake, Minnesota, Brian Daigle. Brian Daigle is the owner and operator of Daigle Refinishing and Fabrication. He opened his shop in 1994, restoring and building muscle cars. He was part owner of the Rat Rod magazine from 2011 to 2016 and built rat rods for the magazine, competing in their first ever official Rat Rod magazine tour back in 2011. Brian built four rat rods in six years and competed in four tours and two build-offs with the magazine. In 2016, they held a SEMA rat rod build. I was at SEMA that year, and I remember those cars, of which that included three builders. Uh, One of them was Sam Hard in his crazy wild 37 Rolls-Royce rat rod. That raised a lot of eyebrows. This was the birth of Brian's international rat ickle rod build off drive off which we'll learn all about we're going to talk to brian in just a minute first we'll take a quick break to thank our sponsors that make this show possible and we will be right back do you know the best way to protect your special vehicle both the inside and the outside is with a car cover i've been using covercraft car covers since 1975 that's right back when i was in high school i've been around a long time It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking brand new. And they have manufactured premium quality exterior and interior covers here in the United States with a reputation for durability and design for a very long time. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom pattern vehicle covers, and they're crafted to fit tens of thousands of patterns, and that's growing. You can choose from a dozen fabric options and accessories all designed and carefully sewn for your special vehicle. I protected my rides with their covers for over 40 years. And you know what? You should too. And I've got a deal for you. Right now, you can get 10% off your order using a special Cars Yeah code. The code is Yeah120. Use that code when you check out and you get 10% off your order. What a deal. That's at Covercraft.com. Be sure to use the code Yeah120 at checkout for your 10% off. That's Covercraft.com. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for enthusiasts and collectors. It's your monthly must read whether you dream of owning a collector car or if you have 200 in your garage. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get an exclusive SCM guide to restoration shops included for free. And I've got a couple very cool offers. One is if you go and subscribe to their digital subscription, you're going to get 50% off using the code Cars. Yeah, that's right. 50% off their digital subscription. But wait, that's not all. If you go and subscribe and get their print magazine, and use the code BSH, you get $10 off. That's right, $10 off. Why BSH? Well, that's the Buy, Sell, Hold podcast that I do every Tuesday with Keith Martin. You'll find it here on the Cars Yeah! website or using your mobile device with any mobile device podcast app, or you can find it at sportscarmarket.com. That's Buy, Sell, Hold, the essence of collecting. All right, Brian, welcome to Cars Yeah. Are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Yes, I am, sir. All right, we'll have some fun here talking about rat rods. Now, before I jump into some of my questions for you today, could you tell us one thing about Brian that most people don't know? Oh, crap. <laughs> well, um, like I said, I've been in the automotive business 26 years. I'm a God-loving Christian. I mean, I'm on the church council. So yes, <laughs> there you go. Um, God's a big part of God's a big part of my life, and uh, He inspires me and keeps me going. Well, there you go. I think that's that's absolutely awesome. Well, let's start this way. I want to ask you for a success quote or a mantra. This is some kind of saying that's been perhaps instrumental in your success as a builder. It's a nice way to get the 
inspirational tires smoking here on Cars. Yeah, so Brian, grab the wheel. My inspirational quote is from Gene Winfield. Um, Every day is a school day. You're never too old to learn. Every day, you'll just take in more. You learn every day about your what you're doing, and uh, you roll with it. You learn. You're always open for new ideas and new directions on how to do things. It's an awesome way to go through life, and of course, the great Gene Winfield. He would know. I mean, they look at the legacy that oh, that yeah. guy has created. But I love that concept. I have a lot of friends who are physicians, and you know, they are lifelong learners. They have to be because things are changing so much. And One of my friends is a neurosurgeon, pediatric neurosurgeon. Imagine working on babies' brains, man. Holy cow. And uh, he said something interesting to me once. He goes, you know what? I'm always in school. I've always been in school. I'll always be in school. There's always things to learn, always things to know. And I thought to myself, it'd be great if everybody in life went through life that way because so many people get out of school and they... They kind of go, oh, I'm done with that. It's like, no, life is school. No. Yeah. What are some of the ways that you continue learning in the business that you're doing with building some incredibly cool vehicles? Well, every day is a different day. Um, Every day is a different car. You know, like right now I'm working on a 55 Lincoln, and there are no parts available for 55 Lincoln. So we're going back to school. We're building a lot of the body mounts, quarter panels, lower of the fenders, the rockers, all this. You know, take your knowledge from other cars and you apply it to the next vehicle. Like this Lincoln, now I'm building all body braces and rocker panels. This is something I don't normally do, but you just got to roll with what vehicle brings in to you. So this one is a rusty one, and uh, we got to fab a lot of parts. Do you use very many? I know a lot of uh, people nowadays can have things 3D printed to recreate things that are challenging to make and so forth. Have you gone down that path with your builds? No, we have not. We a lot of metal fab work here, uh, a lot of hand, a lot of hands-on uh, hammer on the shot bag, punishing hammer, English wheel, all the way up until it's good enough to put out, you know, in the vehicle. So a lot of fab work. Well, let's talk more about your business. I would love for you to share a lot more about Dago refinishing and fabrication, and also talk a bit about this. Rat Ickle, I'll spell it R A T I C A L, radical rod build off. So tell our listeners a lot more about your business, all the different types of things and services you provide to your customers, and then uh, kind of take a deeper dive into this radical rod build off. Because I was in SEMA, I was there, actually, I've been there 31 years in a row now. So I've walked those halls wow. many, many miles in those halls. Rat rods are so fascinating to me because you look at them at first and you think, okay, someone cobbled some stuff together. Then you stop and really analyze them and go, there was a lot of thought put into this thing. So I'm really intrigued by what you're doing. So walk us through your business and then get into this radical rod build-off drive-off. Okay. Um, I've been in business since 1994. been in business 26 years. Um, I was in business for six years and I happened to come across this rat rod seeing thing. Rad Rod Magazine was originated in Minnesota and I happened to come across this and I'm like, wow, the economy was kind of in a slump and you could see the, the whole automotive scene kind of shift over to the rats, um, low buck, high impact cars. So I actually quit painting cars for six years and went into building rat rods for the magazine. And uh, we did, what, four tours, three build offs, I was all over the country promoting the magazine, and then the uh, economy came back. I just decided to get out of the rat rod scene, and I sold my shares off, and I got back into painting again, and I've been full-fledged painting here again for the well, last few years. But the birth of the radical rod build-off came out of all this. Uh, 2015, I went to SEMA with a rat rod for Rat Rod Magazine. I uh, represented the magazine well, gave out 5,000 magazines. Got a big wow. We were parked right next to the Shell stage, right at the entrance of the Hot Rod Alley, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, made a big wow. And we decided uh, after at CMA Ignite, a few of us were getting together in the parking lot, and we decided that, well, we just noticed that the rat rod scene wasn't being represented well. So we decided to have our very first rat rod build-off. Three contestants showed up. Sam Hardigan came with that Rolls Royce and just blew everybody <laughs> yeah. away at SEMA. No, I mean, who no cuts kidding. up a Rolls Royce? I know, I know. I mean, it was an incredible build. You know, LS6, Chevrolet, fuel injected. I mean, it was over the top. Well, uh, Jason Gruel a founding member of the event, did win the Rat Rod Build-Off because it was a Rat Rod Build-Off. We did decide after the fact that the Rat Rod scene had evolved. It had gone radical. With Sam cutting up that Rolls Royce, it put an exclamation point out across the scene that the rats are evolving. The quality, the ingenuity, the, the craftsmanship is coming across so hard that we decided to change the name from Rat Rod Build-Off to Ratical Rod Build-Off, the evolution <laughs> of the Rat Rod. 
we went radical. Yeah, no and kidding. It's, uh, it's taken off. We've got traction now. Uh, this year is our fifth year. We are 23 builders deep. So it's it's lit a fire in the the car scene. We're taking in everybody. We're taking in the customs. We're taking in uh, pro tourings. We're taking in gassers. We're taking in anything that's hand built and the people who want to drive them across the country. The event is a 1,500-mile drive to Las Vegas from Lincoln, Nebraska. It's a four-day push. Uh, the road is the biggest judge. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, Some of these builds are put together last minute. These guys are butting them up as they roll in. Some of them are, have been done and have thousands of miles of test time on them already. So the event is really incredible because you don't know what's going to happen on those four days into Las Vegas. And then once we get to Las Vegas, we pick a winner. Uh, we go to SEMA and promote our sponsors. Uh, we push them up on a pedestal because they are the reason we're doing this event. We're taking a lot of builders in who have just never had 15 minutes of fame. They haven't haven't had their little bit in the public eye yet. So we've been taking these very qualified builders and bringing them to SEMA and uh, letting them show the world what they can do. And they're wow in the world. You know, it's fascinating to me because uh, I purchased a car years ago from a builder. He restores mostly old 356 Porsches and early 911 Porsches, John Wilhoyt in Long Beach, and does a fantastic job. He builds everything from Concorde level perfect cars to custom type cars that have special engines that he builds and things. Really does a fantastic job. And when I flew down there with my son who was eight and picked that car up, I get in the car and we're about to drive 1,500 miles back home in this car. And I said, well, mm-hmm. what? do i need I've, I've got extra belts and tools and cell phone and water and sunscreen because the car had our no top on it no top no heat oh, no wow. radio and uh, he said you need a good attitude and when you when you mentioned that these guys get in these rat rods and drive 1500 miles some of them untested you need a great attitude and and to me the rat rod scene is filled with people with spectacular attitudes they're not afraid of doing things. For those listeners out there that might not understand what a rat rod is, Brian, could you explain in your words how you would describe to somebody what a rat rod is? Oh my goodness, this is the most worked over question ever. (laughs) A rat rod is basically, you know, a car put together out of used parts, leftover parts, a lot of times parts that people thought that were too far gone to be restored. But these guys have a passion. They can see, you know, an old body and they can, you know, put their mind to it and make that thing cool as heck. Rad rodding is an entry level into the hot rod scene is the way I look at it. Everybody can, you can, you can build a rat rod and you can learn. Um, it's a stepping stone into the hot rod scene. A lot of these guys are just using the rats to get into the, the field to learn. And then their, their skills are getting so much better. They're learning in time with their builds and they just evolve and they go into the next step, which to me is a radical scene. And then we go into the hot rod scene. We're kind of the radical is the in-between the rat and the hot rod scene. We're kind of the black sheep. Nobody's building belly button cars. They're all taking this head on, and they're taking a car, and they're putting ingenuity and the thought into these things and making them their own, but making them cool and safe and drivable, which basically, like Gene says, is the, is the roots of hot rodding, is what it was. Just in our time, we have gotten a lot more technical in our terminology and what we call certain things, but... You know, a rat rod, basically, back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, the early ones, were hot rods. So it's just we've had a little, an extra genre put in, which I'm trying to do with the radical scene, is we're taking these guys who aren't feeding in the rest of the scene right now, and they're still building incredible builds. It's just they don't have a home in the scene. And we're giving them that little spot in the scene right now as a stepping stone to evolve, to build bigger and better things down the road. I think it's fantastic. And, uh, it's an inclusion of different attitudes and peoples, but you know, I found in the car scene, everybody's welcome. It doesn't really matter what you like. If it oh, rolls, yeah. if it rolls on rubber, everybody loves it in some way, shape, or form. I think it's fantastic what you're doing, and I love the tour concept. I, I can't imagine being in the family cruiser, driving down the road, taking the family on a summer trip, and seeing all you guys go by. I think I'd run off the <laughs> road and turn around and go, "We're not going camping, kids. We're going where those guys are going." <laughs> I think that'd be fantastic. When you think about your career, career over all these years, Brian, what's the favorite part of what you do? What really, why do you get up every morning and you keep doing what you're doing? What just ticks all the boxes for you? Oh man, it's just the love of cars. Mm -hmm. Um, I was, that seed was planted in me in the early or the late seventies and um, it evolved. I had taken a drive with a a guy I knew in town here was the hot rod guy. He always, all the kids hung out at his place because he was a hot rod guy. And one day I was over hanging out, and I actually, he asked me to take a ride. And he had a blown 350 Chevy in the 67 Camaro, flame Camaro. We went out, and uh, for once I got to ride with him. He asked me to ride with him. And I'm just some little 
snot-nosed kid on a bicycle. And he takes me in this car, and we do this monster burnout. And he's got the line lock on, and we're there for 30 seconds with the line lock on smoking. And if you look at the head down the road, it's a nice straight stretch about mm-hmm. a mile long. And here comes a car on the left-hand side, and it, sure enough, it's a police Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, my friend Brady, he doesn't let out of this car. He keeps the line lock on as this police car comes up on us. It is in the opposite lane, and it drives right past us, and he lets go line lock, and we do a burnout for 300 feet at least. The cop turns around. He pulls off into a parking lot here 150 yards down the road, and the cop pulls in, and he is going to start chewing our butt. And he did. He started chewing his butt. But Brady literally turned the tables on, and we started talking cars, and the cop had a GTO, and he started talking about this blower motor, just got a retime, just got the carbs rejetted, we're all testing and all that stuff, and the conversation turned. And the next thing you know, this cop is standing there talking, and we're talking cars. We talked for over an hour about this. <laughs> and he forgot all about the burnout, and it literally turned to, hey, you guys just, you know, take it easy, you know. We know you got to test this stuff and have fun, but, you know, just don't be doing it on public street. Well, he knew what we were going to be doing, but that planted the seed in me. No and From there kidding. on out, I was a true blue car guy. <laughs> oh, my god, That gosh. was it. I was hooked. Hooked past a barb. I'm a car guy. You learned a couple awesome lessons there. Uh, one was, of yep. course, uh, that you're a car guy, but also that there's other car people in the world. And if you're, respect- oh. if you're respectful to a police officer and just start talking about stuff, you never know where it might go, uh, you know, and you don't try to outrun them. That's the last thing you want to do. Nope, nope. We were, you know, we pulled over. We did. We he completed the burnout, of course, because he was already into it. That's what he basically told Jerry Wydell that we're already into too far. We had to keep it going. <laughs> and Jerry kind of laughed about it. And we, he rolled into, he started talking about that motor, the blower, the carbs, the timing, all this stuff. And Jerry just leaned right into it too. The cop was just, wow, that is so cool. Because he watched the burnout happen. We went right past him. Of As course he, come by he us, did. We yeah. were going by the opposite direction. <laughs> so... It was a, wow. a learning lesson. Like I said, we gave him respect, and he respected us back, and yeah. it was a good thing. He was a car guy, and we were a car guy. So we met eye-to-eye with, on that fact, and uh, the car was the main conversation. He forgot all about us being naughty in the street, so it was a good day. <laughs> naughty in the street. How old were you? You said you were riding bicycles then? Uh, it was probably like 78, 79. Okay. I was born in 1966, so I was, you know, 10, 11 years old. 10, 11 years old, maybe. yeah. There you go. Very yeah. cool. What a story. Well, let's take a look at some of the roads you've driven down here. Talk about a big challenge or a big failure. And I ask people this question, not so much to drum up a bad time in their life. It's more about the lesson that was learned through that experience. So walk us through a particular experience and tell us how that helped you gain even more momentum as you move forward in your career. It could be your business or your life. Okay, well, uh, one thing I'm, with, with me would be when I hooked up with Rat Rod magazine. That was on the cutting edge of the Rat Rod scene. It had never been uh, really been done before. It never been put on paper. And them guys got that magazine, and they put, started putting it out, and it was incredible. We were literally, most people say you ride the wave of, something, of success. We were the wave. It was incredible. Me going to SEMA, trying to get you know, the magazine to grow, giving out 5,000 magazines, looking for expansion and advertising. And that's where the big thing, when I came back, I had advertising for the magazine. And the editor looked at the magazine and decided that they were going to go down the road of not trying to advertise a lot to stay true to the rat rod scene and just put in pictures and articles in the magazine. No advertising. Well, to me, a businessman, you have to be able to feed that monster. And they didn't feed that monster. So I'm sorry to say that Rat Ron Magazine went out of print here probably two years ago now just because the monster wasn't fed. The passion is still there. I think the magazine is still online and everything, but it's just the fact that when you have to feed the monster sometime to keep something going, you got to keep feeding the monster. You got to, you have to grow. You have to evolve. And they decided to stay true blue to the Rat Rod scene, which give them all the respect in the world. They're an awesome magazine and an awesome publication, but we have to evolve with times. And that's why I kind of went into the radical thing. I've known all these people across the country that are building cars to the next step above a rat rod. So that's the birth of the radical rod. I just learned that sometimes you got to lean into it and feed the monster to keep things going, to evolve, yeah. to grow. Yeah, what was their thinking? I mean, magazines really only survive because of advertising. I mean, your subscriptions can't support everything. It just, it doesn't pencil out from a financial standpoint. So what was the con? I'm curious, you know, Ken, you got my curiosity because I came from a marketing world. Advertising uh, worked in a business where we we produced hundreds of thousands of catalogs and mailed them. That was different because we would get orders from those catalogs. But what was the thought? Mm -hmm. I, I get the concept of be true to Rat Rod, but you got to be true to, as you say, the monster, the business, because it has to make money. 
Um, I don't. I think he just wanted to stay true blue to the scene, to show the respect to these guys that are building these rat rods. And uh, I, I don't know. It is you have to be able to feed that monster to keep it going. You know, here's a great thing. Obviously, we look back on situations that didn't work out the way we thought, and some people get sour grapes, and others go, you know what? What did I learn from that? You obviously learned something and took it forward to a next step to what you're doing now. So kudos to you for for taking that lesson forward. It's really an important thing, and a lot of people walk out of a situation that goes upside down, and they don't look back. There's a great quote by the great uh, F1 driver, Ayrton Senna, that I love, and that is, the past is just data, I only see the future. And he had a great attitude about, if I, you know, if I lose a race or whatever, I just look at what happened so I could take that forward and try to win the next one versus going, ah, oh, man, darn it, you know, something screwed up or whatever. So, uh, again, kudos to you for taking it forward, just using that data and taking it forward. I think it's great. We'll take a short break. Thank our sponsors here, and we will be right back. If you're listening to Cars Yeah, you've probably spent some time working on your favorite ride. But how confident are you working on your finances? You may be able to rebuild a fuel injection system, but can you decipher the details of a mutual fund? If you're like me, investments, insurance, annuities, budgeting, and other financial concepts may seem a bit daunting. But what if I told you there's a book that describes these subjects and more in an easy to read and a very humorous way? My friend Chris Kimball, CFP, a longtime sponsor and past guest here on Cars yeah, has written that book and it's titled The Saga of Ike and Penny, a couple's humorous journey through the confusing world of finance. It's a fun look at things you need to know. Everything from investing to effective ways to get rid of credit card debt. And it's probably the only book on finance with a VMAX on the front cover and a classic Mini Cooper on the back. The book's available at Amazon for just $10 and this book will dramatically improve the direction of your financial future. I gave copies to each of my children. All securities are through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Christopher Kimball Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Get your copy, The Saga of Ike and Penny, today. All right, we're back. Well, you you kind of already answered one of my questions, and that is a story that instigated this passion you have for cars. That ride in that guy's that car with the police interception and so forth, I think, is great. Let's jump forward to your first really special car, the first car in your life that had great meaning for you. What was it? And maybe share a special memory you have about that ride. Uh, my first car basically was a 1971 El Camino, and it was my 10th grade year in high school. And um, I was just an average Joe, didn't really have a niche, wasn't fitting in any of the social groups, you know, wasn't a jock, I wasn't a book smart guy, I was just a dude. And I drove my El Camino in the school, and uh, at noon we had open recess and stuff, you could go out and monkey out in the parking lot or walk downtown and get a burger or whatever. Well, I would just pull my El Camino up on the lawn, we'd throw the speakers out on top of the roof and we'd play Frisbee. Well, this was never done before. No one ever has done any stuff, stuff like this at school. All the kids would go run around town and stuff and monkey off. Well, we'd just hang out in the parking lot and play frisbee around the car and next thing you know all the car guys were out hanging out with me and <laughs> i literally started my own little clique of people that wanted to be car guys who just wanted to hang out and you know talk car be cool and you know throw frisbee around and have fun that's pretty cool you started your first uh, cars and coffee at, at school at, yeah at lunch literally yes cars and frisbees i like it well that's an awesome story yep. I, so so you were like the uh, cutting edge there i I think that's absolutely fantastic because you're right. High school is such a weird clickish time. Everybody has their little yep. groups and they go off on their own. And uh, you found a way mm-hmm. to create your own a group of people and enthusiasts and you've been doing it ever since. Yes. Well, here's I'm going to get in your skull a little bit here, Brian. I really want you to dig deep on this and think about this question. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle parked in your shop, what would you be? And this isn't what you want to be. It's more how you perceive yourself as a human being manifest into chrome and steel or rust and rubber whatever it might be so what's brian it would have to be a custom car of course yeah. you couldn't put your finger on what i am really because i have done everything from 100 point show cars to rat rods i've seen just about every vehicle you could build by all the kinds i don't want to break in here but i built a lot of weird stuff and a lot of really <laughs> nice stuff no it's cool so to me a custom car is the key because you can't put your thumb on it. It's just plain cool. Yeah. And that's, that's where I think I'm be. standing. I hope I'm standing. Yeah. In this part of your life, would you lean more towards being a rat rod? Or do you think you're more of a shiny car, uh, you know, show car or street car? What what kind of custom car would Brian be? Well, as like I said, I'm trying to bring this radical scene forward. And that's basically where I'm really plugging. I'm in the, the in-between. I don't have a niche in the scene where I'm this guy. I'm the 100-point 
Pebble Beach guy or I'm the hardcore rat rod guy. I'm kind of all over the board. I like them all, and I love to build all of them, and I love to drive all of them. So, But my true blue passion is the custom car. Gene Winfield planted a seed me many years ago, and that's kind of the road I wanted to go down, and meeting him in 2017 was a big inspiration for me, and that's the scene I'm going down. I'm chasing. You definitely are, my friend, for sure. Well, we are entering what I call the last lap. I'm going to fire off a list of questions here and ask you for some quick blips of that custom car throttle. So here we go. What's one of your personal habits you think has contributed to your success over the years? <laughs> uh, being stubborn, not giving up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my wife says I'm stubborn as all heck, and that's, that's true because when I put my mind on something, I lean into, it, lean into it hard and I just do it. There you go. Mm -hmm. Just get it done. That's not a bad trait. How about if I could arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would it be? Mm, Probably Big Daddy, Ed Roth. Uh, You know, he was a black sheep of the scene back in the day. You know, he was building that stuff and people thought he was crazy. I mean, he's building some stuff that never was done before. He was cutting edge, but he, I don't believe at the time he was doing this, he thought he was cutting edge. I'm sure he just thought he was a car builder and these guys, you know, all talk to him. He's crazy. Look at him, what he's building. Now look at him. He's an icon. Absolutely. Yeah, I got to meet him when I was a kid. My dad took me to a car show. I grew up in Southern California. Oh, wow. I remember that. Very was, cool. Yeah, so cool because building models and stuff of his cars and things like that. Yeah, big. And then uh, years later, fast forward, when my son was very young, we went to a car show and got to meet him and he signed a poster for him. He's still hanging in my, my son's room here. My son's grown up and moved off, but that poster's still wow. there with his signature on it. Yeah, with the, the rat Very fake. cool. Yeah, so very yep. cool. Indeed. How about the best automotive advice someone else has ever given you? What would that be? That would be Gene. The every day is a school day. You don't close your mind. Everybody does stuff differently, and you never know. They could give you some tips and uh, advance you and your your skills. So you never know. You got to listen to everybody and you know, watch how they do it, and you might be able to learn something from them. So keep an open mind. Every day is a school day. Love it. How about a resource, a go-to for you? Is there one you'd like to share? Uh, right now, for actually part of my business, the Radical Build-Off, um, Get Out and Drive podcast. Right now, they are. it's a new podcast that just came out. They're blowing the horn a lot for us. They are interviewing, I think, all of our builders, all 23 of them. So they're going to be helping me out tremendously. And I'd like to tell them, thank you very much for Get Out and Drive podcast. Appreciate you guys tremendously. There you go. I have to reach out to those guys and get them on my show here uh, and get them to talk cool. a little bit about what they're doing so I can support them as well. That's great. Sure. How about a book? Is there a book you've read that you'd like to share? Um, I'm going back to Gene again. He's a big inspiration in my life. Um, inspirational book for me was a TV movie cars to look at his life, what he's done from start to finish. You know, was, Gene is what, 92? I think he's going to 93. This guy has an incredible life and the stuff that he's done I got a chance to sit down with him for a couple hours one evening, and the stories he told, it just he planted a seed in me. And ever since then, I've been a Gene Winfield fan because the guy has done everything from TV, movie cars to custom cars. He's, he's one of my favorites in the scene. Love you, Gene. Sounds like it. There you yep. go. Shout out to the great Gene Winfield. Yes. I'll remind our listeners, you can find all these resources Brian's been so kind to share on his very own show notes page. Just go to carsyeah.com. Type in Brian, B-R-Y-A-N, Daigle, D-A-G-E-L, and that page will pop up with all these links. All right, Brian, we're up to a fun question here, and I like to call it a bit of a doozy. I'm going to build or buy or have built or provide you with a collector car something very cool to park in your garage but there's a couple rules to this game that might make your answer a little bit of a challenge you can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with or build a bunch of cars with you have to drive it and enjoy it no garage queens here i don't think that's a problem for a guy like you Uh, but it's the only one cool collector car you can have so choose wisely but i'll write the check who you got to go back to the, my favorite man again, Gene Winfield. The, the custom car scene, it, it was so inspiring for me to see these cars when I was young, um, just from pictures and books. I would have to say the Jade Idol because of the custom fade paint job that was on that car. That just blew me away. I think that was one of the very first fade jobs that was really put out on the scene back in the 50s. And it was just incredible. You just never had seen that before. And, you know, that he's the master of the fade paint job. So I don't know if, what the Jade Idol is worth. I think it's priceless to me. I don't think you put a figure on it, but it would be one of those cars that I would just hang on to because it's a piece of history that needs to be shared with the next generation of the car builders because the inspiration that he, you know, 
he's put out is just incredible. He's the bar has been set so high with Gene, you know, from what he's done in his lifetime is incredible. So I don't want to keep beating Gene up here, but I love the guy, and I mean, I think he's been a big inspiration in my life, and uh, I think the Jay Idol would be the one I'd have to have and just basically put on a mantle and sit there and smile, enjoy it. That's a 56 Merc, is that right? 56 Merc, yep, 1956 Mercury. Yeah, it's got a wild, crazy paint job, a big, like a white yep. stripe down the middle, and then it fades into dark green and then fades back out down the yep. sides of the car. And it's almost yep. got that Cadillac, 50s Cadillac headlights that were double headlights, but then flipped up yep. on their front. Yeah, yeah, okay, I know the car you're talking about. Yeah, insane. Yeah, that's going to cost me a pretty yep. penny here, Brian. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> you're no cheap date, my friend. No, thank you much. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty cool. Well, listen, Brian, this has been fun. You know, I, I tell our listeners I got to meet Brian. I was on a special uh, evening webinar podcast. I'm not sure what we call that with um, Mike yeah, and Jeff. Fun. Jeff this did. Yeah, it was fun. All sorts of cool builders. I felt a little out of place because all these super talented builders and they invited me to be on the show, but I got to meet some really cool people. Got to bring you, my Cars Yeah listeners, Brian Daigle, which I'm very, very happy about. So uh, you've taken us on a really fun ride today. This is cool. Really enjoyed getting to know you better. Before I let you go, could you offer our listeners maybe one little parting piece of wisdom, guidance, uh, an idea before you rip off into the sunset in that jade idol be yourself don't be a follower in the car scene there's enough belly button cars out there dare to be different build something that you love and you put all your passion and your ingenuity into something that makes you proud you know it's great advice be yourself i know when i started doing this podcast thing i didn't know what i was doing and i talked to a lot of podcasters and they all said the same thing what you just shared it here brian just be yourself Yep. Just do what you want to do. Try to decide what it is you want to do. What I want to do here is inspire automotive enthusiasts by bringing you inspirational people like I've done today with Brian. Brian, if people want to follow along with you, what's the best way for them to track you down and see what you're up to every day? You go to my Facebook page, Brian Daigle, um, daiglesfabrication.com, my website. Or you can follow the Radical Build-Off again. That's radicaldriveoff.com. Or you can get a hold of me at radicaldriveoff at gmail.com. Um, we're looking for builders. Anybody who wants to cut loose and build something crazy and drive across the country and prove that you are a very good builder, uh, contact me, radicaldriveoff at gmail.com. We'll see if we can put you in a mix. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll make sure I put links to all these on Brian Shonard's page so you can track them down. And again, that's radical, R-A-T-I-C-A-L. Uh, yep. Great play on words, by the way. Brian, hey, thanks for calling in today. This has been really fun. You are one exceptional person. Thank you for sharing your experiences with Cars Yeah. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Take care. Thank you much. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah! podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah! website at carsyeah.com. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah.